Real Life Street Stars. We're here with K9 Keys and what it is, nigga. Yo, 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 yo. yo. That's the damn deal. <laughs> Go by the production in it, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Hey, for these niggas who don't know deaf, dumb, stupid, living up under a rock, man, tell nigga where you from, man. Man, K9 Keezy is born and raised in Terrell, Texas. The North hey. side, specifically. I am the prince of the North. 1805 North Francis, that's my shit, that's my hood. You can't mention North Terrell without mentioning K9 Keezy, and that's a fact. Man, tell these niggas about Terrell, man, because a lot of niggas think this shit's sweet out there, bro. Oh, a lot no, of niggas think it ain't really going down. No, there, it, it, I mean... Terrell is a place where you can go to live and be peaceful and enjoy life if you ain't in the mix. But if you're in the mix, put it like this, just uh, about a week ago, a 15-year-old kid just got killed in my hood. You know what I'm saying? Sad to say he was doing some, uh, well, I can't really speak on it because I don't know what he was doing, but the streets say it was some shit about some robbery or something. They found him in his own backyard, one shot to the head, one shot to the chest. And he was 15, so I mean... If you in the mix down there, you make sure that you, and I don't encourage you. Don't be you, in the but, mix. Yeah, don't be in the mix if you go down there. Because, I mean, if you, if you do, make sure you covering your tracks and you taking care of your shit. Because a nigga will take your ass out quick. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's just what it is. The South Side, it's a, I give them their credit. It's a little bit more stiff on the South Side. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's, South Turtle is like South Dallas. North Turtle is like North Dallas. It's like a, it's crazy because it's like a, a mirror image of the two. You know what I'm saying? And I done lived in Dallas for a while, so it's like from Terrell to Dallas, I see the same shit. You know what I'm saying? So Man, ain't too much, ain't too much different shit. It's the hood is the hood, no matter Yeah, where. no matter where you go. How you get into the music? Uh, I got into the music. It's crazy you asked that, because uh, I was in like the fourth grade, right? And uh, my daddy had this truck. It was a GMC 1500 Sierra two-tone, brown and silver, the orange pinstripe on some rims. And he had been out there washing the truck in the yard, vacuuming it out, cleaning it up. And he had wrote this poem, and he let me read it, and I'm reading the poem or whatever, and it, I'm thinking he's talking about having sex with my mama. <laughs> when he's talking about the poem, the poem was like, he was like, uh, as I rub my hands all over you and you begin to glow, I can't help but to want to climb inside of you. So he, I'm like, damn, this nigga talking about sticking my mama down. So you know what I'm saying? I'm reading it, I'm like, damn. And he's like, and I just step back and look at you and you so wet and it just makes me want to get in you again and I get in you and I, I embrace you and, and I'm at the end of the poem. Did you say, damn, daddy a freak. Yeah, man. I'm What's like, daddy, that? daddy freaked out. Pops freaked out. So I get to the end of the poem and realize he was talking about his truck the whole time. And I was oh. like, wow, that's creative. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I wanted to start writing like him. I'm like, man, I want to write poems like that. I want to make people not understand that, you know what I'm saying, I could play with my words like that until they get to the end of it and I started writing poems first so give me a time where you wrote a poem that captured uh, the, the heart of a woman oh man I did it for my wife actually I, I wrote poems for my wife you know what I'm saying and she still got them you know what I'm saying I didn't even I don't like to give out all the game to these niggas but I'm gonna give y'all a little something one time I wrote a poem for her backwards like the whole letter is you looking at it all the letters are backwards you gotta put it in the mirror to read it yeah I made a word yeah, yeah. Tupac shit? Like, what, uh, what was that Prince song you had to play backwards? <laughs> so you yeah, get like, well, I see, I do a lot of reading, you know what I'm saying? And that's yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. prison taught me that, you know, I'm, I'm all about reading books. That's where the knowledge is, you know what I'm saying? Pimp C said, you want to hide something from a black man, put it in a book. So I'm always, right now I'm reading the Prosperity Bible. That book is like this damn thick, but it's, it's business shit, you know what I'm saying? It, it teach you about not giving up when shit get bad, you know what I'm saying? So anyway... I read about that poem shit in a book, and it was like, try something different, you know what I'm saying? So I'm thinking, what could I do different? Write a motherfucking whole poem backwards. So when she look at it like, boy, what the hell is this? I'm like, go put it in the mirror. So she put it in the mirror, and she, you know, tears running. Like, that was so creative. That was so thoughtful. Like, oh, my God. I got to ask, how long does it take to write a poem backwards? <laughs> Nigga, oh, my for God. Me, <laughs> for me, it don't take long. It's natural, like, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? I could be talking to you and you'll think I'm a pimp just because the way I talk with my wordplay, you know, but so when I'm, if I got my heart in something or someone, then it's going to come like that. You know what I'm saying? So at what point did you take, you know, the, the poem and turn it into a music career? Seriously at 15, because at 13, I used to, uh, you remember when we had uh, the tapes, you know what I'm saying? You could play the tapes and record yourself, you know what I'm saying? 
And my mama got mad at me because I said something about a ball fade and uh, like the H-Town niggas was talking about, keep a ball fade. She was like, you don't keep that motherfucking ball fade? I'm like, I got one now. She like, leave that shit alone. So 15, uh, shout out to Lowe's G and Young Keish out of Terrell, Texas and Oak Cliff. They did a home studio uh, street over from my mama's house. And uh, everybody told me I could rap at this time. And I was trash back then, honestly. But everybody was like, nigga, you go hard. So they was like, go to the studio. I go to the studio, record my first song, and it was a beef track, actually. Remember the What's Beef, the Lil' Flip? Yeah, what's yeah, yeah, beef? yeah, yeah. I redid the What's Beef by Lil' Flip. And then yeah, I passed CDs out all around the school. Who was you beefing with? Uh, some people in Terrell, but, you know, we got over it. We grew up. <laughs> Hold on. It was, back then, nah, it was a... Back, nah, we need to start on this. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, it was North, North Terrell versus South Terrell type shit. Oh, then we bridged man. the gap as we all got older, though. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Now it's like, like I couldn't go across the tracks and hustle when I wanted to like that shit. I got robbed like that before. Right. You know what I'm saying? Guns to my head and everything. So it's like, I'm glad we all matured and that shit over with. Because, I mean, we was young, dumb. Everybody was gang banging and hood claiming. And so, you know, you go over there and try to hustle. And niggas like, shit, you ain't from over here, nigga. Shit, get up out of hood. You know, they, they weren't trying to hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, that's, that's, that's how my first music, uh, that's how I got into music. So at 21, though, um, you were charged with murder. And uh, within 90 days, you were indicted on capital murder. Facts. Um, let's talk about that. Um, I, I know you probably can't get too much detail, but Facts. <laughs> um, that situation, what, what happened and what did it teach you about life in general? Okay, so uh, 21 years old, I'm neck deep in the dope game. Like, it's crazy. Like, I, you just ask the streets, but I'm neck deep. I'm talking about with cocaine, pills, pounds of weed here and there. Uh, so, dude steals a pistol from me to hang out with me at my trap. You know what I'm saying? We getting money together. So, uh, mind you, if I'm hanging with treasure or candy and I steal a gun from them and we getting money together, but I'm still coming and chilling with them. And they discover that I stole it. Well, I don't know how nobody else think, but I'm thinking if you still hang with me and you stole a pistol from me, I'm thinking in my head that you eventually gonna let me get comfortable enough to rob me. You know what I'm saying? So I asked dude, and condolences to his family, man, cause like he shouldn't have died. I'm gonna be honest with you, dude shouldn't have died. You know what I'm saying? But uh, once I discovered that I was, I felt some type of way about it. This dude knew where my mama stayed, knew where my granny and Tyler stayed. Rest in peace to my granny. Uh, hung out at my trap every day. We got money together. We back and forth to South Dallas, Tyler, Austin, Waco, getting money. It's like, then this nigga stole a pistol from me. So I get fucked up about it. We have a fight. Uh, SKS come out on my end. I pull SKS on his homeboy and tell his homeboy to get out the house because, like, shit, I'm like, you've been bringing him over here to steal from me. So... Long story short, uh, a guy that was hanging with me ended up feeling like shit. He needed to die. So dude grabbed the strap and while he was on the ground after just getting uppercut it by me, you know what I'm saying? Not to brag on it, but that's what happened. Uh, he dropped. Dude grabbed a 357 and ended him, shot him in the throat, one kill. You know what I'm One shot, one kill. And I ended up getting wrapped up in it because I was on probation at the time. I had a three-year probation sentence for getting caught with a pound of weed coming down the highway. I was two years into that three of my probation, and this dude that I put out with the SKS, and I regret putting him out with that SKS, man, because it had the bayonet on the end of everything, so it was like a Rambo-ass gun. I, he heard a gun from outside the house, so he like, what the hell going on? So long story short, he called the police, we had already shook the spot. Police looking for me now. They got pictures of me outside the trap. They got the narcotics involved because it was some pure cocaine found in the house that I was getting ready to cook up. You know what I'm saying? I, I had to leave it, though. So once they found the pure cocaine, it's like now narcotics and homicide after my ass. You know, and we didn't even find out the dude had died to the next day. But uh, shit, I get charged with murder. 90, my bond was 100000 90 days in, they indicted me on capital murder, which if y'all don't know, for the ones watching, capital murder has two forms of punishment, life or death. And they was offering us life without parole. They said, if you go to trial and lose, we're going to give you the death penalty. I prayed about it, prayed about it, found my court date in the Bible with a promised blessing. It said, from this day forth, on the 24th day of the ninth month, I will bless you. 
And that's in Haggai chapter 2, starting at verse 18. Uh, and when I seen that, I was like, dang, God, you speaking directly to me. That's my court date. And this book been written for over 2,000 years. So sure enough, on that day, my co-defendant had already beat his shit in trial. I didn't go to the trial. I refused to go because they, they wanted me to break the code. You know what I'm saying? And I told my lawyer I ain't with it. So I didn't go to trial, his trial. They try to, uh, we set up for trial because they still offer me the death penalty. I get there, and on that day, like he said, when people come out the back and say, look, they just lost on the, uh, the life and death shit, gave him 25, take five a day for aggravated assault, we'll let you go. They ended up giving me murder anyway, but I took the five on a plea, and shit, I'm standing here in front of y'all today. God is hey, amazing. Hey, hey, that's a, hey, thank God. Come on. Thank you, thank you. Let me ask you this. Was there any moment through that process that you felt like you was going to break? Yeah, I did. Uh, a lot of times the police officers in there would come in there and tell you, you ain't about shit. You ain't going to beat this case. And I'm like, man, God already told me I'm going to beat this case. And they were like, ah, you're going to be in here forever. You ain't getting out. You ain't getting out. No. Yeah, yeah, man. They was coming in there telling me updates. I, they knew I was indicted on capital murder before my lawyer could come tell me. So, like, they came in there saying, oh, yeah, you done for it now? I'm like, what? They was like, you ain't heard? You made the front page. I'm like, what? They was like, you indicted on capital murder. I'm like, man, whatever. They was like, yeah, you're buying a million dollars now. It ain't, it was 100,000, then it was 600,000, then it was a million. So I was like, it ain't no damn million. And they was like, yeah, it is. So one of my homeboys come in from off the streets, and he my celly now. He like, bro, you know they got your bun at a meal? I'm like, what? The chick I was dating at the time, she had the phone set up, money on the book. She come visit me and she like. Oh, so she kept the salad? Uh, <laughs> for like, for. Uh, for a million for, dollars shit now. Uh, I, uh, hey, what's that meal hit? It was like, all right. Uh, well, for about a. It's over with. <laughs> nah, she, she, she kept it G for about a year. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's a long time. But, yeah, yeah. Nah, she kept long. it G for about a year. I ain't, hey, look, real, real shit. Fuck off, dude. Just do what you do. Live your life. When I come when home. I touch back down, when I touch back down, down. You better not have no kids. No. Hey, she no did. Mistake. She did. She had a little boy on. Yeah, just don't have no kids, man. No I ain't mad at her, though. You know what I'm saying? We was young. We was now, 21. Now, I've been watching uh, For Life with uh, 50 Cent, man. If, if your girl came to the cell with your best friend, how would that fuck y'all? I you mean, ain't never seen that. <laughs> I mean, put it like this. <laughs> for life, kind of like it's kind of like on Minister Society. But <laughs> yeah. uh, I put it like this: if she would have, if she would have popped up with my nigga, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too much fucked up with either one of them due to the fact that I put myself in that position. I'd be fucked up about the situation, like, damn, this how y'all doing it? Some of them gone, but I'd be more fucked up with the fact that I mean, cause I accept life, man. You gotta understand, I was gonna get the needle, so it's like I see life in a different pair of shades now, like. So, like, I accept people, fucked up people, jack boys, snakes. I accept them for who they are. Amen. You know what I'm saying? So, like, they don't bother me. So, you said you, um, they wanted you to, you know, go in on your partner's case, you know, to, uh, to speak on that. And you chose not to do that. Now, of course, a lot of cats in this day and age, they, you know, the whole snitching thing and stuff like that, they, they have a different, you know, outlook on it. For yourself, as far as, you know, what you were kind of, you know, going through right then, what consequences do you, for you yourself, say, man, if I do that, you know, this is the consequence if I do that for yourself. That oh, man. See, at this time, I still planned on coming home hustling, right? Yeah. yeah. Because I was plugged up. Like I say, I knew right then if I would have done that, all them doors would have been closed on me. Like, yeah. my plugs would be like, hell, no, nah, nigga, you know too much about us, nigga. Nah, we ain't got nothing. And then at the same time, my hood, they wouldn't have let me come back like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would have been a whole lot of shit, high and by, nigga, fuck you, get out the way, nigga, you ain't from around here no more, nigga. And then shit, not just my hood, the whole Turo, you know what I'm saying? Turo is a little, it's a stiff little place, you know what I'm saying? So you can't just move like that and think that you're going to still be accepted, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just don't work like that. Now... Fast forward, you come from up under all of this, all this, all these obstacles. You, you do what you do, you come home. Now we back to the music. Okay. What is your first, what is the first thing you implement to get back in the swing of things? How, what was your first thing? Like, okay, I'm going to focus on my music. How did you go about it? What were the steps you took to get back to where you know you wanted to start recording? 
Uh, well, first thing, I got to kind of slide prison back in to give you that answer. About mm, almost to the end of my five-year sentence, I met Mr. Goldbottle. Shout out to Mr. Goldbottle at goldbottlelightproductions.com if you want to purchase a beat. I ran, I ran into him on the unit that I was on right before I'm, man, they had denied my parole twice. And I was in there taking trades. I took the electrical trade. I took meal work and cabinet making. I was putting trades up under my belt. You know what I'm saying? Doing productive shit. And they never would get me off the gang's wings. I was a suspect gang member the whole five years I was gone. And then they finally, I didn't even request the move because I liked it over there. It was gangster, but it was respect over there. And on the ungang wings, everybody disrespecting each other. Fuck you, bitch. I'm like, damn, you can't say that over there. So they moved me one day out the blue. I'm like, damn, why I'm moving? I didn't request the move. I was good where I'm at. Moved over there for like a month, literally. Met Mr. Goldbottle. He was famous on the unit. For <laughs> he had a conjugal visit in TDC, and you can't have conjugal visits. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, yeah. Put shout it like out that. to Goldbottle. So, yeah, shout out to <laughs> Mr. Goldbottle. They left the door unlocked in the visitation room, and the guards walked out, and shit, he was like, shit, I'm going to get that in real quick. But he was famous on the hood for that. They was calling him Philly because he's from Philly. And they was like, man, you need to fuck with Philly, man. Philly, because I was writing hard. I'm dropping my shit in there. These niggas like, bro, you going to pop. So they like, you need to fuck with Philly, though. Philly got the beats. He, you know how to build websites. He plugged in. He done been deep in the game with the biggest rappers you know. And I'm like, I need to meet this nigga, Philly. So I finally, when God had me moved, I'm putting it on God. I move over there, and we run into each other. We on the same wing. So... I was like, nigga, I got one of your books. I've been writing information down your music business book. And he was like, uh, yeah, niggas been telling me that you go hard, too. He's like, run three songs for me real quick. So I run three of my hardest hitters. He said, I'm going to give you my number. Call me when you get out. I said, bet. He got out a month before me. I got out a month after him or whatever, and I called him. And he was like, let's go. He sent me a beat right then. I started writing. I'm like, let's get in the yo, nigga. He said, no. I said, what? He said, no. Get your music business together first. So he became my artist developer because he does yeah. artist development too, for those who don't know. Uh, if y'all want to follow him, his tag is at Beats by GBL on Instagram. GoldBottleLightProductions.com for his beats. But uh, that's how I got this gold bottle too, by the way. You buy enough beats, he'll, you know what I'm saying, make it to where you can get you a gold bottle. So, and these are 850, you know, by the way. Right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Ace of Spades. But so he sent me a beat, then he tell me, don't get in the studio, just write. You know what I'm saying? I got five years worth of music. Ain't nobody heard out here yet. Deep shit. But uh, so anyway, get to my point. He tell me, you need to work on your business side. Let's do artist development first. And then after that, I'll become your artist manager. So he got my BMI situation going. He got my business accounts going. He got my website, K9Keezy.com, if y'all want to check that out. Uh, he got my website together. Then he plugged me in with Special Teams Limited, which is, which is a clothing line. Uh, shout out to Special Teams Limited. You know what I'm saying? Teams with a Z. Uh, they got my K9 Keezy apparel. If y'all check that on my grind video out, you can see some of it in there. And uh, even in the kicking shit video, the original one, you can check it out. So, so for a year straight, I was just getting my music business together. Nobody seen me or heard from me. And then shout out to Picture Painter who just dropped the project too. He get me in the studio for the first time after year. I'm ready. I jump on a song with him. Then two gutter, we run back into each other and we grew up in the same hood. We run back into each other and he like, man, I ain't did nothing about a year. Let's do something. Video shot. Then we shoot the video that we got Bugatti in. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, it took off from there and it ain't stopped. That's live, man. So let's talk about this album you about to drop. Right. Um, right. That's coming this Friday? What's yeah, with the Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Is that, is that Mayo. Friday? Wait, no, that ain't is that Friday. Friday? That's unconventional. That's like Tuesday. Okay. Well, <laughs> Cinco de Mayo, though. Cinco de Mayo, Taco because, Tuesday. And it's the reason why. Okay, the name of the project is Say Goodnight to the Bag I Reloaded. And I want to shout out these two ladies that yeah, I brought let's, with let's, me. Let's, 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 let's give them an introduction. Yeah, this is Candy. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can call her Jordan Candy, whatever she want to be called. This is Trap Goddess. You know what I'm saying? These are my business partners. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I can't do this without mentioning Tiff. Because if, if you don't shout out Tiff, Got, she, got a shout out. I'm going to pass the mic to them and let them introduce what they do. And you tell them, just tell them what y'all want to hear on the project. This one to drop. Well, you already know my, my song. I already did a promo video to it. What is your on song? Instagram. What is uh, your favorite? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's pull, up the video. <laughs> Let's pull up the video now. Um, is it? 
Let me see. I guess y'all can see. I mean, I met you at the strip club and you was having them racks on the floor, so I feel like, mm. uh, let me see. Is it, what's her name? Yeah, it was, yeah. Everybody tried to hit me up for my videos after that. Here it is. Oh, y'all can follow me on Instagram at pretty o -M -R -E -I -L -L dot M -B. My Instagram. You want the video? Other than, oh, that's the promo video right there. Wait, you found it? <laughs> might have to put it back up, dog. Yeah, we might, right. we might have I, to like put it on the screen somewhere. So, so anyway, you got a promo video out. Yes, I right. do all those promos for a lot of, for a lot of. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all. Yeah. I do promos for a lot of artists, but K9, I fuck with him the hardest. Right. So him and Trisha, like, we just like this. Like when it comes to money, like we just get to it. Like a lot of these females out here, like yes, I dance, but I got a lot of shit going for myself other than dancing, like. You know, I got an associate's degree. You know, I'm doing my own thing. I dance, yes, but I also, you know, do mortgages too. So, and That's I got up. my little business on the side. So, wow. yeah, so, yeah. So, like, with, with the world being in chaos right now, like, has that affected you in any type of way? At all. It hasn't, hasn't fucked all. with your money? I That's legit, I've been getting nothing but blessings That's this wow. whole time. Like, legit, literally, because I had took off, because, you know, the shit club clothes, that's really where wow. I make all my money in the shit club. Right. But shit club clothes, so I just had my main, you know, I work 10, to, I work 9 to 7. So I had that little job I had going on or whatever. So then I, you know, I got my little side hustle. I'm not going to speak too much on it, but I got some. Yeah, not, not too much, not too much. Oh, but baby, I'm not out here. No, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yeah. But, yeah, but yeah, you know you yeah, gotta yeah. say that though because you know, baby, the shit club clubs, bitches gotta get it how they live. Hey, hey I go loud. I go loud. I mean, I'm just saying, I go no. loud. Hey, I go loud. <laughs> hey, hey, I ain't go loud. When I see Sauce Walker say his girl made four hundred thousand selling feet on OnlyFans, I say, God damn, what yeah. the fuck going on? Too. Well, yeah. <laughs> what Not the fuck? for real. That's crazy. Not nah, for real. Uh, really? Nah, I get money without getting naked. I can do that. I can get money naked or. Yeah. Without. Hey, how how much do uh you know how much do you feel like even with the whole corona, do an average stripper put to the side for times like this, to shine like this? I got a card. I'm not saying you personally. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> You're like, why don't ever have no card? <laughs> Man, my shit, my shit paid off. So that shit just start happening. It's cause nah, it's cause hey, get you it's cause they. Shit. Nah, the truth is. I'm tired of picking you up now. <laughs> nah, cause they too busy trying to fuck for free and shit. Like, yeah, they fucking, they fucking. No, bitch. Where your car at? I already gotta pay for you to be in a bitch. <laughs> Not for real. So basically, um, I've been selling lashes for a little minute. Well, I, still getting dolled up in the corona? Who? I'm saying females are still getting dolled up of in the corona. Course. I mean, I know, but she do it, so I, I, I get that. <laughs> baby, baby, I've been struggling trying to find somebody to do my nails. Been, been struggling, yeah. struggling. But yeah, yeah, hell yeah, yeah, people, people be hitting me up. I'll be having um, I saw I started with lashes, but I eventually opened up my own boutique. It's online. It's an online boutique right now, but soon it'll be like in, like a pop up shop type situation. But right now it's just online. Um, I've been getting a lot of good feedback. It's weird though. Most of my online customers are from like out of state. They're not from Dallas. Like, That's and it's weird though because a lot of my love is not coming from Dallas. It's coming from motherfuckers not even in Dallas. That's how. Like, that's how it is. Weird that's how it is with anything though. But yeah, y'all can um y'all can definitely follow my <laughs> business page on Instagram, and I got my website. It's called Top Notch Boutique with Rich. two E's. Top Notch Boutique with two E's, clothes, lashes, shoes, hair. I got everything. So, That's yeah, y'all. Make sure to hit me up. Trap Goddess. Trapping out the bando. Yes, sir, Ski. Bando. <laughs> so, uh, has the corona fucked your grind up? What you got going? Say, man, I, you know, I don't want to rain on nobody's parade, but I kind of wish they make us stay in the house to 2021. Low key, because I've been quarantining for a minute. And I feel like at the end of the day, if you ain't stacking and trying to get your shit together at the end of the day and staying out of motherfucker face, why you in the motherfucker face if you ain't got no money? 
You know what I'm saying? I be seeing so many people tell me, oh, I just want to be around somebody. For what? <laughs> when some shit happen, can you call that motherfucker? Hell no. Quarantine and chill. Stay with your family. Get, get to know your family values. Teach these motherfucking kids how to motherfucking get to this money on some real shit and, and just stay out the way. You know what I'm saying? So quarantine has been great to me. Thank you, God. I appreciate everything you done blessed me with. It didn't bless me. Just like I was saying earlier, like if you ain't came out of quarantine with no new hustle, no no nothing going for yourself, then you ain't did shit. You know what I'm saying? Your mama ain't raised no hustler, baby, because I don't made so much money during this quarantine. I think I made more money than in quarantine. Than oh I yeah, we gonna we gonna talk after this. <laughs> we gonna talk after this. Yeah, baby. I, I, I gotta ask to, I uh, to trap um man, you brought a uh, what's what's you brought t t tiff. <laughs> Yeah. This is yeah, my check. Tiff, wake this, up, is, Tiff, got that. this is my well, she kinda fucked up. She went to a quarantine yeah, party like, last night. Yeah. Yeah, she went to a quarantine party last she night. Part. Uh but Tiff said, What's up, y'all? Hey Tiff, how you doing? But uh this is my best friend though. You oh, know, really? she she ride with me. You know, I ain't gotta worry about no bitch stealing from me, talking shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I pull up somewhere, she ain't gotta say who the fuck in the motherfucking place or the spot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Bitch, I ain't trying to get you to fuck everybody. Just sit down and cheat. Yeah. That's the bestie. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Anything I leave around her, it's going to stay there. So, you know, that's the bestie. Me and her, we rock like that. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> <clears throat> so, Trap Goddess is my hostess. You know what I'm saying? Anytime I throw an event, she going to be hosting. She going to be on the flyer. She going to be in the building. And what I love about her is... When I walk in the motherfucking building, I ain't got to say shit when, I, when she got the mic in her hand. They going to know who K9 Keezy is before they even see me. Because she going to be saying shit. K9 Keezy in the motherfucking building, nigga. Where them racks at? Nigga, throw them racks on the floor. <laughs> and then she going to tell the broke niggas in the strip. Because what we love the best is turning the club up. Whether it be a strip club, nightclub, whatever the fuck. We going to turn that bitch out. And when she got the mic in her hand, all I got to do is be me. You know what I'm saying? She going to shout me out. She going to goddamn... Tell them to run that shit. And the broke niggas in the strip club, she gonna make their ass pull that money out. I give her that. She gonna say, she gonna say all these women done got their goddamn nails and hair did. They walk around these fly ass outfits and you broke ass niggas just standing there looking. This ain't no motherfucking free show. What them pull that motherfucking money out or take your broke ass home, bitch ass nigga. Get the fuck up out of here. And the club <laughs> owners, the promoters and the DJ and the dancers, they love of course that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all be putting a lot vouch. of pressure on niggas, don't they? Oh, man. man. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, 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 what? Hey. Hold on, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait. Let, let, let's get that clear when you say the broke niggas. Because at the same time, a broke nigga can still have fun, too. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you, because I, I, if a nigga you know, walk in with a gun, let's be he honest. You know, I, let me go ahead. And, let me go ahead and talk my shit real quick. Cause I don't let you know what I'm saying. I let everybody say shit. You know, I'm an OG. I come from the Onyx. You know what I'm saying? Wire way, Dallas, Texas. Okay. So goddamn me, when at the same, you gotta love somebody. You know, everybody, you can't love everybody the same, but if he come in there and he trying to support you, it don't matter if he got five, ten dollars, baby, show him some love. How do you, you make know? that five dollars stretch though. That would be and say, I can't say shit about stretching. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you know, yeah. you get what you pay for. Yeah. So you might yeah, how you to, make you stretch, you, you know. You might rub a nigga thigh or something like that. You know, but don't get don't get to thinking that a nigga will just be all up in your face like that for five dollars. Okay? You know, but when you get your check. And you want to have a little fun, or you got your homeboys, bring hey, these. No, no, honestly, honestly, what you is a good, I mean? no, honestly, I want to ask an honest question. What is a good amount, a respectable amount, to come in a strip club with? No less than uh, 200 bucks. Okay, so, two, so 200 to get it done? Yeah, I feel like if you don't have that, it's okay, stay home. It's okay. <laughs> but we ain't going to miss you. Stay home. Hold on. Hold on, Stay home. What if I like the wings though? Like, what if the wings? <laughs> you could have ordered y'all food and deal. And now, and deal. I hate when niggas do that. Wait, 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 when I was live, y'all just listen. I used to hate that because when I was working at DGs, they'll come up there ordering food, and ordering food. The bitch, though. That's cool, but baby, get your stuff and dip. Hey. Don't look, don't touch, don't try to fly with me, baby, because I'm gonna expect wait, you to wait. give me some money. So, so if a nigga walk past you and slap that the ass cheek with a ten dollar bill, is that like unacceptable this. or not? Nah? I'll tell niggas, oh baby, you that's touch cool. Me, that's, the that's ten dollar slap cheek, that's cool. Twenty dollars. I need twenty dollars. Oh, you need the twenty dollar slap $20. cheek. The ten slap cheek. All right. What about two dollar Tuesdays? Is that just bullshitter? Two dollars to get in. I don't know about <laughs> the two dollars to tip. So we don't know about. 
Two dollar Tuesdays. Hold on, wait. It's cool. I'm talking about to get in. No, 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 no. It's cool. It, it's some people in there generating $2 Tuesdays because when I used to do $2 Tuesdays, the DJ used to play a snippet of a song and then they switch. And you go handle every dude in the room. But say, you know, we might get a little greedy. If a nigga tipping more than $2, we might not switch. Not so it's really. a little bit different. You could come up on a couple hundred dollars if you do your shit right. These songs you know be saying? a minute 30 seconds nowadays. Hey, I got to ask because a nigga do come in there with like a budget. Uh, I got to ask either, either y'all, what's the most fucked up story y'all came up with? To tell them to get that money out of them. I know y'all normally will come with a story. Yeah, y'all will come with a story to make a nigga like shit. I really, to, really to be honest, I don't think there should be too much talking because I didn't put no gun in your head to come here to pay to get in this motherfucker. You if you see him. this ass and I'm I, I'm bouncing in front of you, you know what it is. I shouldn't have to ask you for a motherfucking thing. That's I just facts. know if you ain't spending the money right, then I'm gonna tell you, you know what, babe? Let me go ahead and try and make me some money. I'll be back if ain't nobody doing that. We can come coming talk. from the OG. You know OG. I mean? Okay, well I got my own perspective on it because usually like. With certain, I I'm a little bit I'm a, I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna lie I'm in a, like a bougie ass stripper I don't deal with the fuck booze I don't deal with the booze. So shit. how much how much minimum should a nigga come in the club with? I mean you can tip me twenty at a time. No, I'm talking about like total life. I got what you see, she said two hundred is a good amount to come like, in that to bitch. To start with, with yeah. oh she said start. But like I mean I feel like with me I feel like with me I get a lot of money because like before I just come up to you throw my ass on you I'll talk to you talk to you know a nigga like a girl with a good mind. With a good mindset, you tell them your dreams, your plans, what you plan to do with yourself. You're not in the strip club, just you know, just to. I fell in love. No, no. See, so that's, like, but this, this, that's that be the, the thing, though. That be the thing, though, because once I talk to a nigga and tell them what I got going for myself, then they want to throw that bag, but then they also want to so, try to take me home. So I'll be like, so, so what's the most fucked up story you told to get a I, nigga to spend that? One? But I ain't really gotta tell a nigga no fucked up story, though. Like, I swear, I got a good, I got a good map piece. I'm telling you, that map piece gonna be everything. You don't gotta have to. I mean, I got some. <clears throat> but I'm just saying like a map piece can take you far so tell the artists why they should be spending money with y'all because we always have this debate we say that strippers are probably some of the best ear of music talent like they pick the best songs and they dance to it they turn it up on their Instagram like you gotta invest <clears throat> into yourself you know yeah. like we have at Ace of Dallas we have what's that uh what's that thing we do on Tuesdays Industry Tuesdays niggas come in there they pay to they pay to uh, perform, but then don't have the money. Like y'all don't have the money to throw on the girl, so then the girl don't want to dance to your song. You got a photographer you paying for. You got all this shit you paying for. And then you go on the stage with twenty dollars with two bitches on the stage. I will walk my ass off the fucking stage. Look at you crazy. Um, I won't get naked nothing, but I'll go get dressed before I do that shit. I tell them all the time. If you you gotta invest into yourself, like come. I'll jump to that stage. <laughs> I, baby. Yeah, they they do be live. Like if you see if you if K9 coming to the come to the come to, uh, I can't talk today, y'all. My bad. If he coming to the club, blood one. Yeah, he he going he gonna fuck with you for real. But he only fuck with bitches that fuck with him. You know what I'm saying? Like some of these bitches just be thinking cause they you know cute, look cute, they feeling they still they gonna get that bag. Bitch, no, you ugly as fuck. <laughs> fix your big fix this cause you look bitch. Fix the lipo. All right, get yourself together. And really, he really like natural bitches though, low key though. So I really can't. Now, like bitch with yes. Oh no, it's business for me. When I walk mm -hmm. in a strip club, see, I've never had sex with a stripper. That's let's get that out there first, because a lot of people be like, "Oh no, you be fucking them all, nigga, no, nigga, nigga, they be up." No, understand that first. There's not one stripper in this world, and that's on my daughter. They can come to you and say, "Me and K9 slept together." So. First off and foremost, when I walk in the strip club, I have a game plan because I'm an artist. This is business. So me and Treasure be done talk before we even went. Hey, look, how much money we throwing tonight? Okay, bet. That's what we doing? Okay, bet. Boom. So we're coming up with a plan. <sighs> go throw 100 on the stage real quick. Boom. Go chilling VIP. They going to be like, ooh, who is that nigga right there? Or who is that female that just did that? And then we're going to go sit in the VIP and chill because let it be known, this is the fact. Whatever club we step in, we VIP'd off the rip. You know what I'm saying? That's not bragging. That's, that's what we work for. Because we used to have to pay to sit down. Now, we walk, book and come with VIP off the rip. So we're going to be chilling. We walk in, throw that boom, walk, go sit down. When they come to that section, I let up pick and choose. Treasure, which one? She be like, oh, she ain't about shit. She just after you. She jocking. 
don't fuck with her. Boom, you got a wife and kids, fuck her. Boom. <laughs> what about her? Mm, she don't know what she's doing. All right, bet. What about her? That's the bitch you need to fuck with right there. She got her mind together. Let, let's, let's work with her. Let's work with her. Yeah. yeah, they come, they come, they come find me. <laughs> they come find. Me. Say, I was just gonna say, uh, I remember when I first, like, when I was telling y'all off camera how I met K9, and you know, K9, he was telling me, uh, we were talking and we were doing like rap shows and shit like that. And I told him, I said, you remember what I told you? I said, K9, stop going to rap shows. <laughs> Yeah, I said, you know, I said, the real thing is, is that the women, they turn you up and the DJs there, they are the radio station DJs. And at the end of the day, you sitting up rapping for these same motherfuckers, it's not getting you no leeway. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, if you go to the, go to the club and it's actually girls that actually respect your grind and your hustle and you see that they hustling too, you know what I'm saying? It's a business opportunity. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, that's how I looked at, you know, stripping too. And that's that's why I say it is because, you know, I have my own business. I do trap house models. You know what I'm saying? And I try to get a lot of women to understand it's like you can make money, a lot of money without doing the whole shit. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it's so easy. Like you can find me at Treasure Trap Goddess uh, on Instagram and uh, Trap House Models on Instagram. But we try to, what I try to explain to them is if you get involved with men with music and these music videos, then you have the opportunity to be seen more Instagram uh, live more, you know, instead of just being in a club with an attitude and you always wonder about where your next motherfucking meal gonna come from. Stop having your head up your ass and start talking to people about some real motherfucking business because if you were here stripping, what you doing it for? You know what I'm saying? And, and that's how I feel because there's a lot of girls out here that's shaking their ass up in the motherfucking club, but at the end of the day, bitch, if you go do it, let's do it. And if you ain't riding on no beans or you finding a motherfucking ride to work, you need to find a day job, bitch, and that's just what it is. So do you think, I'm wait, one more question, do you think OnlyFans is a good joke or no? Uh, you know, to be honest, I don't know about OnlyFans, you know what I'm saying, to be, to be completely honest, but hey, Miss Megan, shout out to you. Because <laughs> God damn it, I swear to God, you got me thinking. You know what I'm saying? Because I was 13 years in the strip club, you feel me? And it's, when I say I done motherfucking got, shout out to the niggas that done paid the bills and I done tricked your ass out that money. You ain't got no pussy. Appreciate y'all. But anyway, <laughs> you know, it, 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 I, it, Miss Megan, say, man, do your motherfucking shit. Because at the end of the motherfucking day, you ain't got to look at no motherfucking body but you in the mirror and but God. So at the end of the day, that's less t uh, touching. Coronavirus spreading and all the extra shit. But if I learn how to make ninety eight thousand dollars in two days, I'm damn sure gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna put it like that. Period. Shit. <laughs> Period. Now, Keezy, I see you have man. You have a strong like team. Yes, sir. Man, every man, you seem like I have everything figured out for the most part. Epic videos. Thank you. you thank know you. Like, thank you. Thank how important as an artist is it to have a team like that? Man, it is very important. Your whole career is going to be based off not your talent. Not, not who you know. It's going to be based off the people that you associate yourself with. Like, I surround myself with bosses. These women, I, I, I vouch for them. We've never been intimate. I've never seen them get promiscuous in any business situation. They go in the club. They go in the music scenes with their mindset. That's why I fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you got to understand, you need to surround yourself with bosses and people who can think while you... Like, while I'm handling the, the mic, rocking the stage... Treasure scouting for the, the people that we need to be building with. When I get off the stage and she hosting, I'm looking for the people that we can build with. So it's like you got to have a plan and you got to have a team of thinkers. You don't have we fired people just because they come in the scenes with us and they be bopping and thotting and niggas just be wanting to drink with us and smoke. And like, bro, what are you doing? Or sis, what are you doing? You fired. It's as simple <laughs> as that. Like, for real, even my engineer, my engineer, my pro my producer, my manager, all of that is one person. You know what I'm saying? My website design, he does everything. Uh, he's always b basically been in my corner as far as the team members I got. He'd be like, treasure, she good people. She know what the fuck she doing in that club. And 
Treasure gonna pull my coattail in the club. If I'm fucking up, like as far as uh I don't know, normally fuck up, but if I'm saying if I'm wasting too my much time, fun. if I'm wasting nah, uh, well, we really don't get to have fun like people think. And if you ever come to the club and work with us, you'll see that it's, it's really I took my wife to the club with me before and she's like, I don't see how you like to do this. We here, it's three o'clock in the morning, nigga. And I'm like, this is business though. And she be like, see, a lot of people think it's fun. And because we make it fun, you know what I'm saying? But we, mind you, we been like the Nerf gun shit. We, we brought that to Dallas, Texas, to the strip clubs. Starting at V-Live, we came in there with the water guns and the Nerf guns, passed them all out to all the strippers. We turned the club into a motherfucking playground. We got grown folks in there running around with Nerf guns and water guns shooting. Even Mr. Hit That, we gave Mr. Hit That a gun and shit, it just really went from there. We, by the time we got the AOD, shout out to Candy, shout out to D-Will, we... I, everybody I was trying to get to get me in contact with D-Will. It was, oh, well, he's busy. Oh, well. I told her, hey, I need to talk to D-Will. This after I done made her about a rack, right? I brought all my ballers in there, and I said, look, this is what we going to do. I'm going to make you some money. I need one favor from you. I said, I'll tell you when we done. After my homeboys flooded her ass, she, she had so much money, she had to just kick it all to me. Like, here, hold this. I got money coming over there. Put this shit up for me, K-9. Yeah, so... After she made all that money, she was like, what, I mean, what's the favor you wanted? I said, I need to talk to D-Will. That's it. Hold up. Brr. Three to five seconds later, D-Will was in my face, and I didn't have to go in the office. Shout out D-Will. That's my dog. So I told him, I said, hey, look, man, I want to turn your club up a little bit more. I got this project from the drop. Say goodnight to the bag. I reloaded. My strip club anthem is racks on the floor. They love it. I said, but if you want me to turn this club up, allow me to bring my guns here and a couple of the security guards knew me from V-Live, and they was like, he ain't going to cause no trouble in your club, bro. Let him bring them guns in here and watch how much money come out these niggas' pockets. And y'all wouldn't believe me until you come to one of my shows. We pull these Nerf guns out, pass them out to the dancers, and, she, and shout out to Yaya the Goddess. That's my homegirl, too, because she started out with me in V-Live doing this. And when we get to goddamn AOD, and she goddamn showed them, like, hey, listen to K-9 when he tell you what about them Cause a lot of them be like, I don't want to play with no nerf gun. I'm grown. Okay, Mr. Bag then. I tell him, <laughs> you know what I used to tell him? I say, take this nerf gun, go find a nigga that you know got money in your head. Cause you them dancers know the niggas with money and they know how to get it out of them. But the one that you trying to, he picking and choosing who you want to tip, pull that gun and put it to his head, pop his ass and say, this ain't no stick up, this a dick up. And watch that nigga pull that bread out. I'm the 2020 Uncle Luke. I'm going to tell y'all that now. I'm the 20, amen, amen. I, this shit is what I do. You know man, what I'm saying? You're a marketing genius. We walk, yes, I'm marketing <laughs> genius. We walk in the club. I'm like, uh, what's the, what the baby say? I walk in with six bitches. This is how I'm living. I, for, I walk in with six to eight females. This all fly, all business minded, not hoes. Don't fuck with hoes. Them hoes will get you fucked off. But we walk in business minded and they like, dang, who is that nigga? They be thinking I'm pimping. But no, we all on a mission right now. We finna get this bag. Make it rain. Turn the section up. Hey, go get that album. <laughs> That's what I tell. Man. It dropped. Hey, it dropped. Yeah. Oh. It, it, and and, and oh. to bounce off that, my project. I'm gonna say it again. It dropped. Cinco de Mayo. Say good night to the chief. I got, got Uno Loso on Uno there. Loso. Yes, I got. Yeah. I got some of the biggest names in the city. I got two unreleased tracks with T. Rail that y'all ain't even heard yet. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Hey, but with all these people doing the deluxe, you might want to. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> put out yeah. The original, then put out the deluxe. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, I supposed to have a video with Don Chief. You know what I'm saying? This ain't to throw shade or nothing, but Chief reached out to me after we did I'm the Man. We did I'm the Man in, like, 2018. He reached out to me sometime about hmm, close to about a year ago now, about 10, 11 months now, maybe 12, maybe about a year. Reached out to me and was like, hey, I got a jug for you, K-9, you know what I'm saying? Because Chief, you know, we were fucking with each other tough at the time. He was like, I got a jug for you. Two songs and a video for X amount of dollars. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I just ain't been able to catch back up with him, you know what I'm saying? Maybe y'all could ask him what's going on with that, you know what I'm saying? But we were supposed to shoot the video that I'm the man, and it just never came about. We never reconnected on that, and I don't know what happened on come that. Come on, Chief. But, we need you, Chief. Yeah, yeah. come on, yeah, Chief. We, yeah, I mean, let's do shit, it for the city, know. nigga. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Uno Loso, shout out to Uno Loso. We got the On My Ground video Loso. out. You know what I'm saying? Loso, that's my dog. We met in, we met in 20, what was it? What's this, 2020? We met in 2019 at Stop by Stop with. I co headline with T-Rail, and that's how I get down there to Austin, you know what I'm saying? 
Chief, me and Chief perform. We kill I'm the man on the stage. The whole fucking club with bananas. Whole time Uno Loso sitting about that far away from me and I ain't noticed because I'm work, I'm focused on my performance. And my cousin-in-law, shout out to Brittany, you know what I'm saying, out of Emory, Texas. She pull up on me after I get off stage and she like, hey, give me a picture with Uno Loso. Like, fuck Uno Loso at he ain't there. She's like, he right there. He was right behind you on stage. I look, I be damned. So I'm like, shit. I pull up on him. I'm business minded, you know what I'm saying? And I don't get fucked up in the club. So I'm focused. I might have a drink or two, but I'm focused. Like right now, I'm sipping his ace, but I'm focused. But I pull up on Loso, and uh, mind you, all eyes on me because we just killed three songs. Me, Picture Painter, me and Chief, then I did Kicking Shit by Myself. Shout out to Black Magic Productions for all my dope-ass videos and edits, you know what I'm saying? Get at that boy. His number is on the end of every one of my videos. So uh, I get at him, and Loso was like, yeah, you did your thing, bro. I'm like, I want to work with you, though, nigga. What's up? And he like, shit, get my number. Get his number. We on the way home from uh, South by Southwest. And we playing my music in the car. My wife like, why you didn't perform on my grind? I'm like, uh, I just really moved off of uh, what the people been liking lately. She was like, you should have did that one. That's, that's one of your best songs. So I'm thinking, Loso ain't no flashy nigga, but we all know he got some bread. He'll be on his grind. So I'm like, the song, the direction of on my grind was, because I was going to go distant. I was going to go, you know what I'm saying, distant for a while and just focus on new projects. And I'm like, if you ain't seen me in a minute, dog, I'm on my grind. Stacking paper, I got flavor. Y'all can keep the shine. So I'm like, that's Loso all the way. You know what I'm saying? So I reached out to him after South by Southwest and said, what you think about this track? He said, I'm fucking with it. That nigga sent me the verse back, and I was like, ooh, that nigga killed it. We got to shoot the video. Shoot the video. It's out on YouTube now. K9 Keezy featuring Nuno Loso on my grind. Hey, man, before we get out of here, man, we got to talk to him about, man, you dropped epic pro injustice, man. Oh, epic injustice, song, man. yeah, man. Very deep, man. Thank you. Uh, a lot of niggas don't even know how to tap in to know that side of light. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Man, tell us about you know how that song came to exist. Shout out to Mr. Goldbottle once again, cause I ain't gonna lie, I was sleeping on the whole police killing the people in their houses situation. You know what I'm saying? And. uh he was like, hey, man, what you think about them police killing them people over there in Fort Worth and Dallas, man? That shit ain't cool, man. You need to make a song about that while you got the eyes on you. And I'm like, oh, okay, 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 yeah, I ain't really looked into it. You know what I'm saying? I'm working every day. I got my family. I got my shit going. I ain't really have a chance. I don't really watch TV like that. So I'm like, he like, bro, you need to pay attention to what's going on in your area. You know what I'm saying? You got a voice right now. Do it. So I'm like, well, send me the links. So he like, no, you go look the links. <laughs> So I go look him up. Yeah, for real. I, I get lazy with his ass on shit like that. So I go look it up. I instantly read the reports and get mad. I'm talking about like my blood boiling like this is fucked up. This is injustice. This is what I was saying as I'm reading these cases. Like this shit ain't right. Let it would have been us. You know what I'm saying? And when I say us, I mean black people, Hispanics. You know what I'm saying? Even the white people that don't got the pool. You know what I'm saying? The minorities. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the misfits. Let one of us would have did that same shit. And... If we weren't a police officer, we'd have got hung. You know what I'm saying? So he said, hey, I got a beat for you already. I'm like, damn, for he said, yeah, I'm fucked up about them cases. He sent me the beat. I'm playing it. Off the rip, I say, one shot through the window. And then she laying there dead right next to her nephew. Police to the rescue, but you a killer low key, so they had to arrest you. And then the rest just wrote, the song wrote itself. When you got man. a good beat, and beats by GBL, man, they know how to cater to me. You know what I'm saying? And that being said, it's like, man, uh, let me say this real quick. On Injustice, when I get to the video shoot, we shooting the video, me and uh, Black Magic Productions, we out there, we in Southside Flats, right where Botham John where got killed. Happened. Where it where happened. actually happened. And so we out there, man, and we meet Glovator. Shout out to Glovator, man. She literally walked up on us and was like, what are y'all doing? She see the Red Madden. She knew off the rip what was going on. She was like, the Red Madden, I'm catching goosebumps. I got chills. She was like, what music video are y'all shooting right now? I said, it's called Injustice. It's about Botham John and our Tatiana Jefferson. And she was like, get my number. I know this whole case. Ooh. So when we dropped the, the promo video, the preview, she tagged Botham John's mom in it. She tagged all the lawyers that were working on the case. She knew everything. She had went to every trial that they had for Amber Geiger on the situation. And uh, Pacheco, shout out to Pacheco, 
his homeboy was the witness who got killed. So it's like, and I reached out to Tatiana Jefferson on Facebook myself. Both of them, the mama of both of them, John, she reached out to me and she was like, K9, I love this. Thank you for speaking your opinion on this. This song is going to forever live on. Then our Tatiana Jefferson, she hits back. The, uh, the sister of our Tatiana Jefferson, she hit me back and was like, K9, thank you so much for speaking on this. Nobody wants to speak on this and I'm not going to let it die. That shit going to live on through me, through that, even if I'm dead and gone and justice going to live on because. And I write conscious music like that. A lot of times I put shit out like kicking shit and on my grind just to let y'all know I can meet y'all on level, but I'm a lyricist. You know what I'm saying? I claim that. Amen, amen. You got any shout outs? Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> shout out to y'all first off. Hey, yeah, uh, man. Shout out to Boosie for sitting on this couch before hey. me twice. Shout out Boosie. You know what I'm saying? When, they told, when y'all told me this is the same couch Boosie sat on at two that interviews, one. I said I want that one right there. You know what I'm saying? So because Boosie is my favorite artist, you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, we're gonna be legends, man. We sitting in legendary seats and a couple of people I wanna work with to slide in, man. I wanna work with that boy Trap, boy Freddy, Mo3. Uh, I actually was in contact with uh, OJ the Juice Man the other day. We was talking, you know what I'm saying? Oh, this wow. next project I got coming out behind Say Goodnight to the Bad Guy Reloaded is gonna be called Black Mexican because when I was plugged up, man, all I fucked with was essays. That's why in the On My Grind song, I say, if I could talk to you in English, because I am bilingual, if I could talk to you in English, then you wouldn't say talk something. my shit. Say something in Spanish. Okay, let me see. What you want me to say? Uh, your Just kettle, anything. I'll be impressed say, if you say anything. Yo tengo mucho feria. Huh? Yo, yo tengo mucho feria. Oh, okay. Yo tengo mucho feria. That means I got no a whole lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> no entiendo. That means I don't understand. No, what me you entiendes. <laughs> that means I understand you. Yeah, I can speak. 75% of the language fluently, you know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. My grandma had Mexican. So yeah, I grew up in a predominantly Hispanic neighborhood. So, you know, the black Mexican is what they call me. Hey man, you got the hair. Yeah, well, yeah, a lot of people <laughs> tell me that. If y'all, and another thing I'm gonna say before we get off of here is, for y'all's fans, man, uh, a lot of times I move off of features and shit like that off of what the people want. You know what I'm saying? So if y'all fans got anybody in particular that they want to hear K9 work with, have them comment in y'all's post. Say, hey, we want to see him work with them. Let them interact with y'all content. And uh, I know this off the radar, but I want to say something to my homeboy Bugatti while we on here. I wish him and CJ would really kill that shit, man. Cause that, that bothers me to see them like that. Cause bro. I used to, bro, when we was in the pen, I used to make calls for Bugatti to talk to little CJ's mom, which was Bugatti's wife. And she died of breast cancer while we was in prison. Wow. Yeah, and he used to always reach out to me and be like, hey bro, get your people to call them. So I called, I had my people call his wife, which is little CJ's mom at the time. And the last call I got through to her for him, she said to tell little boo I love him. And she died not long after that. And I seen him like a month later, cause we had got switched dorms. He's like, bro, I really want to thank you for that, bro, because my wife died right after that last call you made for me. And he was like, and the last thing that I got to hear from her was I love you. And, he, and like, so me and Boo, we, you know, we got, a, we got a real solid friendship since yeah, 2000, what's this, 20, 2015, 14. So like, I hate to see him and CJ like that, man. I don't like that, yeah, man. They crazy. need to squash that shit. Hey, man, is that? For anybody who want to get into contact with you for any bookings or features, how would they do that? Man, find me on Instagram at K9, that's the letter K number nine, underscore Keezy, that's K-E-E-Z-Y. Or you can reach out to my management and I'll give y'all his number right here. It's Mr. Goldbottle, the same one who make all my beats. The number is 214-771-6662, man. And uh, if y'all want to check out any of my content, man, it's available on all platforms, Cinco de Mayo, say goodnight to the bad guy, reloaded, drops. Hey man, K Twan Keezy, man. K Twan, K Nine. Well, shout out to K Twan too, though, you know what I'm saying? Shout out K Nine Keezy. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Ready. Yes, sir. Yes, man, sir. Man, racks on the motherfucking flow. Racks brother, on the flow, man. Let me man. tell you, brother, you know, a lot of times I don't be knowing what to expect when we look into an artist, bro, but you had some shit, bro, and you was talking about some shit that that really matter, bro. I want to see you 
and grow and flourish, bro. You got a strong team, man. Thank you, man. Thank and you. shit, whatever you doing, whatever you drop, man, tag us. Let us know. Send it to because we gonna tag promote me. the shit out there, shit, my nigga. I appreciate you are a real that, life bro. Street star brother. Appreciate that, man. Y'all suck. Hey. Appreciate that interview, man. Shout out to Real Street Stars, nigga. Moolah. Hey.